Hello and welcome to Portsmouth This Week. I'm your host, Conley Zani. This show is under the auspices of Rich Rayner, our Portsmouth Town Administrator. Together, Rich, myself, and the entire Portsmouth This Week team are on a mission to build community. We do that by bringing you accurate and timely information about the issues that impact you. We introduce you to faces, personalities, leaders in this magical town in which we live. I am honored today to have Rich himself. Welcome, hey, welcome back to the show, Rich. Thanks, good to see you again. You're just my favorite guest because oh. I feel like we get a little bit of a state of the union and sure. everything. But I bet some of our viewers do not know that you are in your 10th year now I am. as our administrator. Time flies. Time flies. <laughs> and I know before you even took this job, you watched yeah. many episodes, maybe all of the episodes of this show, yep. just to know what you you were getting, I did. <laughs> getting into, right? <laughs> I did. So I asked you, I wanted to um, kind of prep you. I, I yeah. just want to know what you're proud of. What are the things you've accomplished? And I love that you have brought <laughs> this, you did a brain dump really oh. this morning, and it, it is overwhelming and beautiful and awesome. And I, you know, we're not going to read a list, but I want you to, off the top of your head, the things that, that just rise and bubble to the center, things you're proud of. Sure. Stories, 10 years, 10 <laughs> years of awesomeness in Portsmouth, right? Uh, well, I'm in my 10th year, and, you know, it, it, was, it was just stream of consciousness. You know, yeah. there was no prep or anything like that. I just sat at my desk between meetings and, you know, just tried to encapsulate some of the things that have happened in the last nine years. And I, I think the, I mean, the one thing that happened that really... Uh, pulled the community together and especially the staff was COVID. Yeah. Uh, our pandemic response, uh, the entire staff pulled together. Uh, we implemented COVID response measures. Uh, we stood up an emergency operations center. Uh, I don't think people realize how many institutions shut down, um, including municipal uh, yeah. functions across the state, across yeah. the country. We didn't do any of that. Uh, town hall remained open. Uh, the entire time. Very proud of that. Uh, we didn't get our first case of COVID on staff until well into the pandemic. Uh, so the measures that we implemented worked. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the vaccination program. Uh, I was just talking to one of the employees about this this morning. I mean, it, that was such a very uh, hurry up and do this program. I mean, we, without exaggeration, we got a word on a Wednesday that you've got to have this program up and running by Friday. Uh, so the community yeah, pivot, pulled together, the, the volunteers, <laughs> Raytheon, uh, staff members, our EOC, uh, very, very proud about the way uh, we handled that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, wind the clock back. Sure. Let's talk about, like, when you first came on board, like, what you were met with and some of the, thi the, some <laughs> of the first things you tried to enable the team to accomplish. Sure. Um, <laughs> I know it's been a while. No, <laughs> I, I remember it there. like it was yesterday, quite frankly. I was, uh, you know, I started a job, my job July 1st, 2015. Yeah. And you walked in and there was not nothing on it the was desk, nothing, nothing, not a pencil, it was, not uh, a... <laughs> I remember Keith Hamilton was the president and he picked me up, it was about 6, 6.30 in the morning and we went for a tour of the town and he was showing me all the ins and outs and the buildings and the infrastructure. And I have to be quite honest, my heart was sinking uh, the more and more the more he showed me. And he wasn't holding back. And I think that was the whole purpose. Well, he was telling you the real deal. Sure. Like after they'd hired you. After like, they hired me. Now I'm going to really open the kimono here and so tell I remember, you what's up. remember, you know, <laughs> after having spent 31 years in, in the Navy in, in, in high levels of command, so I thought, of course, everybody thinks the way I do. They think strategically. They think about second, third order of effects. Uh, they think about maintenance. They think about planning. And so I walked into the staff meeting at 8 o'clock in the morning that day, and I asked all the department heads that were there. I, I said, you know, by the end of the day, I'd like to see your phase maintenance plans, uh, your preventative maintenance plans, and your capital improvement plans. Crickets. Wait, like, yes. Uh, <laughs> right. Absolute crickets. Yeah. And and then I, I like, literally. I'm like, what does that mean? I don't even know what that well, means. Well, they right? and they yeah, did. Yeah. And I realized I had to come up with a whole new language, <laughs> uh, and I went right from there to my office, and uh, you know my computer didn't work. My chair was broke. There wasn't a single shred of paper in the office. There wasn't a pen. There wasn't a pencil. Yeah. I said, okay, all it's right. It's a good story. It's well, just a good story. But the silver lining on that, and it was okay. I start with a clean slate. Yes. You know, and that's that's where we took it. 
you know, so, uh, I mean, I'm very proud of the way that we've managed the budget. We've come in with uh, a surplus every single year for nine years. Uh, we've developed uh, a capital improvement plan based on study and analysis uh, that we maintain every year. Uh, we have uh, developed uh, a strong team. I'm very, very, I, I think the thing I am most proud of uh, is the team that we've put together uh, our department heads, our police chief, director of DPW, um, our emergency management director, our director of business development, uh, our fire chief, uh, HR director, our finance director. Yeah, and there was no you know, HR director when you first there was started, no, right? And there, no, we had I a benefits coordinator, like, but no HR director. So that put a lot of uh, pressure on, on a person who wasn't a department head, um, you know, and, and it felt, it was kind of almost, and it happens all over the country. Unfair. Yeah, and it was almost a collateral duty of the finance director. And uh, we, needed to, we needed to instill some rigor into this discipline because everything, the, the things that will bite you the most outside of finance are, are HR issues. And there's, quite frankly, there's not a single day in the last nine years that have gone by when I've been in the office where I haven't had to at least tangently devote some time to an HR issue. Of um, course. Well, it's all people. People come it's to people, work. And it's, it's people. It's people who <laughs> come to work, but it's your retirees, too. You know, and, um, So we've got hundreds of people, uh, different pension plans, different health accounts, different uh, collective bargaining agreements. It's, so we needed to uh, stand that up. Uh, I'm proud of the fact that uh, we stood up a recreation department. Um, you know, it's still growing, and uh, I think Wendy Balk is doing a great job there. Um, we've been through. Uh, one, one of the things I'm very proud of the fact that we're able to handle change uh, very well. And one of the things that can be most frustrating is. Uh, we do have uh, turnover at the department head level, not all the departments, but particularly the ones that are most sought after across the state, your finance directors, your police officers, your fire. Uh, and they're getting picked off by other municipalities, That's exactly right? what's happening. You know, right? it's, it's very cannibalistic uh, yeah. because these, they're difficult jobs, town planners, building officials. The bar to get into that field is set so high, and then once you've landed a job um, and you've got your feet wet and you've established some credential uh, and cred throughout Everybody the state, wants you. boom, you get, you get recruited out of the job. And as I, I explained this to the council uh, in my last performance evaluation. Uh, recruitment and retention is a, is a difficult but challenge. But that's your number one challenge right it's, now, it right? Is my, it is my number one challenge, uh, recruiting uh, and retaining uh, high performance individuals that are dedicated to do this job for a municipality uh, which at is very pay, hard. Which very, is a very difficult job. It's very job. special. You know, it's, yeah. it's very special. There are, like any community, uh, especially affluent communities, which I've discovered, uh, you have very vocal people who have very strong opinions no. and ideas on how things should <laughs> run. Uh, Do you know any of those people? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, and, you know, bless their hearts. They come from a good place, I think, yeah. and I choose yeah. to believe. But it's, the, it's also, it makes the jobs difficult. And yeah. so how do you look at somebody in the face and say, I, I want to hire you. I want to put you in this very, very rewarding job. But you're also going to work two or three nights a week, and you're going to be paid less than your corporate America counterpart. But we're going to make it up to you in benefits. Uh, but as, you know, we're learning in this post-COVID era, and as we come out of the tail uh, spin of this high inflation era, you know, a, a, a good benefit, a good health benefit, a good pension benefit, a good 401 doesn't take your spouse out to dinner at night. It doesn't, yeah. you know, put gas in your car. Uh, so that is going to be a challenge. So this in the is next, a crisis for us, uh, right? I won't call it a crisis, but I will call it uh, it's, it's, a, it's an issue that we're going to have to tackle as a town. How, yeah. We have to decide, do we want a mediocre police force or do we want a stellar police force? Do we want uh, professional department heads or do we want department heads that are using uh, this as the lowest rung in the ladder to aspire to something higher in a, in a, in a more uh, robust town? Uh, right. These are the things that we have to decide. And it comes truly down to the salaries that we can offer. So uh, that's a lot of it, it is now, I think we've tackled, we have, we have negotiated uh, numerous collective bargaining agreements over the last nine years. Uh, but it, it is now 
We've hit a lot of the wickets that the town wants us to cover and that the unions want to cover. So now it's really kind of, we, you, you call it laddering when you're kind of in the Navy and you're trying to do, you know, you get your ordinance on target, you know. The target is now salaries. Yeah. And, you know, how do we do that and still maintain a decent tax rate? Uh, how do we stay under the cap? Uh, maintain our fiduciary responsibility and to the, the citizens. And you're talking the about town. the tax rate cap, or the, the correct right? Okay. Correct. So yeah. tell me what that is again. Remind me of the sure. rules around that. Yeah. I know we'll probably talk about some budgeting stuff later, but like, what does that mean? Yeah, it's uh, your 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 tax assessment. The amount of revenue that you draw from tax, uh, property tax, commercial tax, um, cannot. Uh, it cannot exceed 4% year over year. So um, in, in, in a nutshell, the budget cannot grow outside of more than about $1.5 million a year, maybe a little bit more. So let me ask you, without getting into big mathematics, yeah. how do you reconcile that with inflation and like, are we due for some crazy reckoning with <laughs> well, that, with that? I, 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 mean, I, I like it's, I, it's yeah. the honest answer that nobody wants to hear is yes, uh, but the reality is that that can never happen. Um, right, we can't. You surpass cannot that. surpass. So, uh, I'll use uh, inflation as an example. Now, we we come in with a surplus every year, and we are. I think we're doing very very stellar work. Uh, the town is. Uh, I think very well run by the departments that we've we've hired and the volunteers that stand up on the boards and committees. But the reality is that that 4% cap was instituted as a measure that you, that's your, you shouldn't be going over that. that. That should be enough. It is now interpreted as that is a line that you shouldn't even get near. So okay. when, when you... You only, and, and it, there are going to be people that are going to be strongly opposed to this view, and, and I do take my responsibility very serious. I never try to get near the cap. But when you don't go near the cap and you're looking at inflation rates that are greater than that 4% or right. greater than whatever percentage you're going to increase, you've, you've not... Something's got to give. Something's got to give. Yeah. You don't go to the car dealership and buy a new police car. You don't go to the paving companies uh, and their, their asphalt suppliers and say, you know, we're, we got a 4% tax cap, so please, and, and we don't want to go near that, so our taxes went up 2%, so uh, you can only increase your prices by 2%. And they're the, like, it, see The ya. real world doesn't work that way. Right. So, so you, you're constantly, constantly looking for efficiencies. You're looking... and. All the tricks that we have in our bags, delay hires. Um, you know, it's very, very sad when somebody retires, but the silver lining is that, okay, the person that's going to replace them is going to come in at a much lower salary. Um, you're looking for efficiencies everywhere you go. And I always tell this, so people, people, it's a small town. Everybody wants to come into town hall and go right to the town administrator. You know, my, my neighbor's tree is overhanging my yard. There's a pothole in front of my house. Uh, there, the music was too loud at Ragged Island last week. Okay. But every person, you that, hear comes that, every in, day. <laughs> every person that comes into my office, I always ask them, how many people did you pass from that front door to my office? And generally, if you're lucky, you pass maybe one, maybe two people on the way to my office. That's because there aren't more people um, yeah, it's, you're running, so you're running we're, lean. We're running lean, mean machine. Uh, so, so we're not asking for more, but it, it's also um, it, all it's those difficult. people are digging deep. These people are all digging into the well, uh, yeah. and the well is going to run dry at some point. So, we that's my focus from here forward: is how do we maintain the team that we've built, and how do we compensate them? Appropriately and correctly, how do we how do we establish equity in as far as yeah. their benefits and their pay, um, and, and equate that with the surrounding metrics? You know, what other towns pay? How do we compare? You know, do we want to be in the bottom? Do we want to be in the top? Do we want to be in the middle? Uh, these are decisions right. that we're going to have to make over the next few years. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. And that's just a small fraction of what you It's just have a small fraction. But it, <laughs> and, and if that painted a sour picture, that was not my intent. Oh, no, the town, no. The town no. is running very, very well. Uh, no. it's, uh, there, there are some people that would disagree. I, there, there's never going to be any. There's like five. Happy. There's like five you people. Know? I know who they are, they, but it's, right? It's, but the other 18,000 you know, love it's, it. It's right. I mean, <laughs> we had the other thing I'm very proud of. You know, we, we have put millions of dollars over the last nine years into our road paving program. Yeah. Um, we have completely modernized our fleet of public service vehicles. Uh, yeah. I, Tom Lee, the former police chief, came into my office the first week. I, I got a double whammy. The first week I was here, within days of taking over, Tom Lee walked to my office and he said, I, I had a patrol officer report for duty this morning, got into his cruiser, his feet went through the floorboard. We hadn't oh bought a car gosh. in three years. Right. <laughs> That was immediately followed by the fire chief coming into my office saying our HVAC system just died. Yeah. In the middle of summer. This is January 1st. It, it, yeah. 2015. Go back and look at it. That was a hot summer. Yeah. And so I went to the finance officer and I said, okay, all right, uh, let's fix this. And his immediate response to me was, with what? Wow. You know, there was no thought as to, well, what happens when things outside the budget happen? What right. those what Which ifs. Which is life, right. Yeah, so yeah, we've yeah. had to address all of that, yeah. and uh, we're doing it pretty well. So yeah. we got a new police station. We've refurbished the fire station. We rebuilt the Brown House. We built a new Sandy Point Beach House. Um, we just, uh, you know, we're putting $21 million into the schools. Yeah. Um, there, we're there about to launch into a senior things. center, too, right? We are getting a brand new senior center. I, you know what? I'm very, very proud of that initiative. Yeah. Um, the senior center is not a town department, uh, but I do believe very strongly that we have an obligation to the seniors in this town and make sure that they have a place they can congregate and there is a place where they can go uh, and, and, and feel at home. We were stuck with a building that was old, that had not been maintained, and was well past its prime, and was going to require as much money just to keep it even, not refurbish it, just to take care of the things that the state fire marshal had found out. The amount of money we would have spent on that would have exceeded the value of that building at the time. Right. So something needed to be done. Nobody was taking the reins. I jumped on it. I not because I'm, I'm noble or anything like that, but it, it was a problem that needed to be solved. Everybody's looking at the town. How do you get this fixed? Town council well, saying, they certainly looked at it. I heard that. They were like, so, town, take care of your seniors. That's, so that's everybody was screaming. Heard it that. loud and clear. Yes. <laughs> there weren't many options. I think that uh, I'm very proud of what we were able to do. And you saw all the signs that popped up that said, save our senior center, save our senior center, save our senior center. Well, guess what? I did. Yes. You know? Yes, yes. And it's we got a, we're getting a brand new senior center. We're getting affordable senior housing. We're getting property on a tax roll. They're going to be the first ones to move in. We're going to get the Ann Hutchinson, if the finances work out right, and the Fed's just lowered the interest rate yesterday, so I think we're on a good track uh, where the finances are going to work out, where the church community is going to renovate the Ann Hutchinson building. Uh, I just got word yesterday morning that the Navy is going to allow the Little League to play at Car Point. That takes care of the ball field. We're working on a plan to develop another ball field. Yeah. All of these things that we said we yeah, were going to do this, are going to happen. Let, let's just and it's pause good. I think it's good for the town. There is so much. And it's not going to cost us a dime. Right. So that's what I want to talk about. Yeah. There is so much misinformation out there, of course, right, of people saying, bait and switch. Now the town's paying for this. That is not true. That is absolutely not that true. That is not true. There is, as part of the senior center part of the building, there is a condo where uh, the office space, the thrift center, and another meeting place are going to go. Part of The only way that they can make a senior center part of this project was uh, Portsmouth had to have some skin in the game. Church community... And it's going to be a million dollars. Church community is finding the, fi the financing for that. Yeah. We're not paying for that. Yes. It's going to be ours. The deed is going to be ours. It's on our property. The church community is finding the money for that. And it's going to be that. leased back to the senior center so that yeah. they can operate a senior center out of there. It's, it's not so costing exciting. us anything. It's so exciting. I, I know. And it's then, just, again, just people being yeah. like, oh. So there's been no bait and switch. You know, it is, it's... 
unless for, uh, unless you want to account for like, okay, the siding is going to look a little different because they're going with a different kind of side. There's going to be even more windows than was originally planned in the uh, shown in the artist's rendering. It's identical. Yeah. You know, there's going to be 54 units. Right. Uh, well, the ball field, we wanted to keep the ball field there. And, it, you know, unfortunately, that was just not fiscally feasible because there is a nine-foot uh, slope to that property. We would have had to build 10, 11-foot retaining walls. Which is uh, a million bucks, Which right? would, Just that alone would have been For a way wall. too expensive yeah. when we can, when there were other options available. So now we're going to be, the Little League's going to be able to play on a field on the water with lights that has yeah. been totally renovated and rebuilt by the Navy. This is the car, what do you car, call it? Car Point uh, car Morale Point. Welfare and Recreation Facility off Burma Road. Yeah, and yeah. then there's some exciting stuff brewing with the ball fields close to Cogshaw. Let's talk about that for just a minute, sure. about some potentials there. I know yeah, nothing's there, set in stone. There's lots but... of ideas. Uh, the reality is the Cogshaw School, uh, even worse shape than, uh, by an order of magnitude than the Ann Hutchinson building was. Uh, really not worth renovating. Uh, it's, it's in no way, shape, or form up to any modern co building code standards. And it's laden with asbestos and is completely mold-ridden. Uh, we have to do something with that building eventually. So uh, there is uh, an initiative that we're working on. Perhaps that could be the site of another ball field. Um, there is property that is being proposed to be developed uh, well behind uh, the property that the town owns uh, in exchange for access to that property. Uh, there may be uh, a deal that we can work with that developer. So there are interesting stakeholders out there. There and are that's stakeholders. TBD and, and that's, so what I want to say is there's lots of options. It doesn't always have to cost the town money. Uh, there are people that are willing to partner with the town that will put the money up front. To, and while they'll get something that they need, we will get something that we want. Um, same thing. Another example. I mean, let's uh, let's let's confront a big issue right off the you know the South Coast uh, wind project. Let's talk about that. And actually, you, know? you have scored a giant coup where the the deal, the negotiation you had with them is you have gotten more money for our town than anybody else around. Yeah, right? Um, is that right? Am I reading that foot right? Foot for foot. It is the most lucrative host community agreement that's been negotiated thus host far on the East Coast. community agreement. And, and listen, it wasn't that we were like, we really want this, but this was coming our way. And so because it was coming our way, you were like, let's make the best of the reality, this. The reality, for the proposed length of this, this uh, stretch of cable, uh, which is only, it, it's this big around, it's going to be anywhere from 8 to 80 feet underground. Like a Coke can or a little bit bigger? Uh, not bigger, but coffee okay. can. Picture, okay. picture coffee of coffee can. can. size cable that's it's, going. It's, it won't be visible once it's installed. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm for or against. I got my marching orders from the council that uh, if this is going to happen, uh, we don't even know if it's going to happen or not. Negotiate the best deal you can for the town. As a matter of fact, one of the councilors, even when this was first brought up, uh, their their comment in open was what's in it for the town, okay. So we negotiated the deal. Whether it moves forward or not is not up to Portsmouth. It's up to the EFSB. It's up to the state. It's up to other regulating agencies that we have no control over: the uh, Army Corps of Engineers, DEM, CRMC, yes. so uh, the federal right. government. Um, but the reality is, whether you're for it or against it, the project's going forward. <coughs> So we negotiated something that uh, will be uh, lucrative to the town, uh, that will go on for decades, uh, and will be a source of revenue for a utility uh, that you'll never be able to see, uh, as opposed to all the lines that Just out the uh, overhead here, lines and like, <laughs> uh, in every street lines. that we live on. You yeah. know, I mean, out my window, I think there's about 12 different lines going right out the window of my my office. So uh, yeah. it's. You know, whether you're for it or against it, uh, we, we could have said, no, we're not going to negotiate a host community agreement. We want nothing to do it, and we're against it. But then it's forced on us, and then it, we're it, left It could have been nothing. forced on us, or they would have picked a route that went through only people's private property, because I can tell you that the private owners have negotiated all their deals before we even negotiated yeah. ours. So yeah. uh, it's, I, I'm proud of the fact that we were able to get something for the town well, uh, as opposed to getting nothing. I feel like I, I've sensed in my knowing you, you're, you're a pretty good negotiator. 
I, well, there are some people that are, I, I, I think we have a good team. I think we hire good people. I won't take credit for that because obviously there are people that will sit there and say, absolutely not. You know, they'll make arguments over the present value of money versus the future value of money. They'll make arguments over uh, COLAs and pension contracts, what have you. But the reality is when you're negotiating, you have to take a look right from the very beginning. They teach us this in the Navy. They teach it. it, it, it I went to school of management. I've, been to, I've got three degrees. What is your bat? Now, what is your best alternative to a negotiated approach? Okay? Yeah. You've got to lay that out ahead of time. It, you've got to lay out your negotiating strategy. And you have to understand that it's not an all or nothing uh, proposition. When you sit across the table from people, and we're just little old Ports Portsmouth, you know, there's a town administrator, uh, there's a lawyer, there might be a lawyer that we've hired, and maybe Lee, our town planner, and then you're looking at corporate lawyers or you're looking at a union lawyer that came in from out of state. You, you've got to be on your game, but you also have to understand that there's going to be a give and take in any negotiation. How is it that both parties walk away from that table uh, getting the best alternative to a negotiated agreement? You know? I learned that term a while ago. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good so, one. It, yeah. And I think that's what we were able to do. I mean, negotiations aren't held in the open, uh, so people can say what they want, but nobody knows what was initially um, offered and nobody knows what was initially proposed. Yeah. So listen, we've got like two minutes left. Sure. I, I, I feel like you and I just talk and like, Well, let's boom. do this more often. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. So a minute on what... Your biggest concern is just as you look at the future, just j just a minute, sure. so you can't even dive in. You gotta just no. say, here's what's on my mind. And then let's wrap with a minute on just the thing in the future that you're most excited about. Okay, um, I think <laughs> some things that I gotta focus on here uh, moving forward, obviously we talked about pay equity, we talked about uh, personnel, but I gotta take a look. You know, we wanna get broadband on Prudence Island. Uh, I think uh, we need to look to, uh, deeper into Prudence Island parking issue. Uh, by the ferry landing. Um, I think that uh, we need to implement the zoning uh, legislation, the changes in the zoning legislation yeah. to our zoning ordinance. Yes, I was in front of the zoning board myself <laughs> last night, so yes. <laughs> um, we, need, uh, we need to take a look at a police substation, uh, small, but some place for a police officer to be stationed at on Prudence Island. Uh, we need to look at, I know I've been asked to take a look at um, some measure, how do we establish some kind of measure of tax relief? So maybe a homestead tax uh, exemption program in Portsmouth. Um, and then I, I think- So those are the challenges. Those are the challenges. Are those what you're looking forward to? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it kind of all gets wrapped it's, it's up in the, the same, same right? thing. It's but I mean, same. what I look exactly. forward to is, uh, you know, I, I look forward to being able to keep the team that I put together in place and working with them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. For at least, uh, you know, I, I just signed another contract. Uh, maybe I'll get another one. Uh, and I'm looking forward to working with a new council. Uh, the councils I've been blessed with have been very good. Um, obviously, there aren't. It's it's not all you know unicorns and rainbow, rainbows. Nor um, should it be, right? You know, yeah. but uh, um, the reality is this next election is going to bring in almost an entirely new council. I'm looking forward to you know the opportunities and challenges that that presents. And, so uh, awesome. You know, looking forward to seeing Portsmouth. Uh, be an even better place to be. Well, yeah, really, I mean, we are, I feel like, blessed to have you as thanks. our fearless leader here. Thank you so much <laughs> thanks, for being on the show. And Appreciate I hope it. that we'll, you'll come back in another month or so and we'll do this again. Anytime. There's so many, I mean, there's so many things <laughs> to talk about. So anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. This has been Portsmouth This Week with my guest, Rich Rayner.